Considering the energy of SHM is not only fundamental, but it will also guide us into understanding the velocity as a function of position. So let's do that. Consider a spring and a mass. And we're going to put an external force on that. And slowly move the mass against the restoring force. So we're not worried about the kinetic energy here. So we're going to move it across from x is equal to 0 to the amplitude a. Now if we graph this, as you probably already know, we get a linear relationship between force and x. And this is the external force. So I'm applying a force in the direction that it's moving, so that's a positive relationship. It's got a positive slope to the line. Now what does the area under the graph represent? Well, it's force times displacement, and that is work. So the external work done is equal to the area of that, which is well, the average value would be a line right across the center. So 1 half f external times x. And that's 1 half kx times x, 1 half kx squared. Now, work total is delta k, which is 0, because we're doing it slowly. So work external, which is positive, plus the work done by the spring, which is negative, because the spring is pulling back on the mass while it's being move to the right is zero. So the force of the spring, the spring force, is an elastic force. It's a conservative force. Therefore, it's going to convert kinetic into potential energy. <laughs> mechanical energy is conserved. And so we can write mechanical energy is k plus u, 1 half k a squared. 1 half ka squared is the entire amount of mechanical energy. When the kinetic is 0, a is, max, a is the maximum stretch, so it's all in spring potential at that point. So we can write e is equal to 1 half mv squared plus 1 half kx squared, which is 1 half ka squared. And this will lead us to solve for the velocity as a function of position. E Getting rid of the half, we have mv squared plus kx squared is ka squared. So let's solve for v. There it is. Now you notice that there is a k over m in both of these terms, so let's factor that out. Square root of k over m times square root of a squared minus x squared. Now we, rem we remember what square root of k over m is from the unit circle analysis. That was omega. And omega is 2 pi times the frequency, and that's 1 over, the frequency is 1 over period, so we have 2 pi over t. Now at the endpoints, at the endpoints, we know that we're not moving, right? So the energy is all in potential. x is a, so this whole thing is 0. The velocity is 0. In the middle, that's where x is 0. If x is 0, then we have basically omega times square root of a squared, which is a, which is also the radius of the circle from whence this came, but omega x or omega a. So it is all in the form of kinetic energy. And we have the maximum kinetic energy at that point. So Let's now from energy, which is what this, what we are considering here, let's kind of go the other way around, solve for x of t from v, v is a function of x. So we have v is equal to dx dt, x is equal to integral of v dt. And that leads to, from tables of calculus, actually equation 12 in your calculus sheet, we have x is equal to a sine of square root of k over mt plus c. We recognize here that this term is an angle. And when the time is one period, that means that the position has gone through one complete cycle, which is 2 pi radians. So this, after a period t, is 2 pi, one complete cycle. So square root of k over mt 
big T, period, is equal to 2 pi. So we solve for the period, which is 2 pi squared of m over k. And we have just derived the period of simple harmonic motion again, of a, a spring mass system, just like we did with the unit circle analysis. Keeping in mind that frequency is 1 over period, and frequency is also omega over 2 pi. There it is. And therefore, we can solve for omega. Omega is 2 pi over t. So 2 pi divided by this thing gives us square root of k over m, which we also saw earlier in the unit circle analysis, and our consideration of what it means to consider angular frequency and angular velocity. Eat. Now let's let a spring mass system oscillate between plus and minus a. And what we're going to do is drop a lump of clay onto it right at the equilibrium position. So the thing is, going this way as we drop this lump of clay on it right when it's moving at its max speed. And basically what we're going to do is look to see the effect of, the, of that on the various physical quantities, you know, the, the energy, the amplitude, the period, the velocity, and see what happens there, and then do it again when the mass is all the way to one end, we'll drop the clay onto it again and, and see what happens. So, before the clay is dropped, energy is k plus u, and there is no u because it's all k right in the middle, so that's also equal to the maximum potential energy, which is one-half Ka squared. So one-half mv squared is one-half Ka squared. Letting us solve for the v at the center, square root of k over ma. Now we also know that the momentum is mv, so we're going to have to consider that. And we also know it's an inelastic collision. So during this drop, we have an inelastic collision, and we know that that always results in mechanical energy going down because there are non-conservative forces acting, reducing the mechanical energy. So the final mechanical is less than the initial. So let's quantify that. After the collision, we have that the momentums are the same. So the new momentum is m plus m v prime. So it's a new, new speed now. So that's going to be the same as the momentum before. So mv equals m plus mv prime. So solve for v prime very simply. m over m plus m times v. Now we can deal with the energy. So we have a reduction in velocity and a reduction in the mechanical energy. We can now quantify 1 half m which is m plus, big m plus little m, v squared, which is this thing squared, m squared over m plus little m, quantity squared, v squared. Well, you can see that. Even though there was an increase in mass, the velocity was subjected to a reduction that was related to the inverse square of this same quantity. There it is, m plus m squared. All right, so obviously that has a bigger effect. So let's finish this problem. Eep. So from that equation, we have the mechanical energy is m squared over 2 times m plus little mv squared. And you'll notice that there is an m over m plus m in there that I'm going to now factor out. And what's left is 1 half mv squared, which is the original maximum kinetic energy or the mechanical energy. All right, so the new mechanical energy has gone down proportional to this factor here, m over m plus m. So now the mechanical energy is 1 half Ka2 squared. So we're going to find out what the new amplitude is. There, is. there it is, but that's also equated to this. All right, so let's rewrite that. But this time, instead of 1 half mv squared, the kinetic, let's consider the maximum potential, which is 1 half ka squared. 
So we can see how A2 compares to the original A. Again, maximum kinetic energy, no potential. That's the same thing as maximum potential energy, obviously. So the halves go away, the Ks go away. And we have A2 is rad m over m plus m times A. So it has gone down. Finally, we have the period is only modified because of the greater mass. So greater mass results in a greater period, so the period goes up. Now let's drop it at A. So we're going to let it go all the way to the end and go bloop, bloop, right on to the mass. So we realize now that there is no concern about losing energy as a result of dropping it because M is not even moving. There's no kinetic energy. So sure, it vibrates the whole thing, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> and so our momentum considerations are just that there is no momentum to begin with. So before and after the drop, the momentum is zero. That's very good. <laughs> so mechanical energy is the energy we had before, which is 1 half Ka squared. So A2 is equal to A. Even though we put a larger mass on it, the amplitude should not be altered one bit. And then the period is the same as before when we put the bigger mass on. All right, so larger period, no change in energy, no change in amplitude. Eep. Let me finish this video with just some considerations of vertical simple harmonic motion, which isn't much different than horizontal, other than under the influence of gravity, the mass will stretch a spring, delta L, so that's the equilibrium position. At the equilibrium position, the spring is stretched. It's not relaxed. So it's the same thing except that force is kx, which is k delta L in this case. So the delta L is F over k. And the force subjected to the spring is the gravitational tug of the mass, mg over k. So that's your delta L. Now let me just do a little real simple problem. Ooh, that takes us way back, back to my 1984 CRX. Well, well this, this isn't, isn't a, CRX, a CRX, but it's, but it's the, the closest, closest thing, thing I could I find. find. Maybe, Maybe this will help. help. I'll, I'll put, put the, the actual, actual license, license plate, plate that I have in my car on this one. one. Okay, well that's really dated since I got rid of that car many years ago. I remember last thing I remember is giving it to a needy family up in Alaska. And actually the Actual last thing I remember is the frame breaking in half, but my goodness, that car served me very well. Multiple trips between Alaska and Illinois. I think my first one was from Iowa, since I got that car right after college. Anyway, in Alaska we have this frozen ground, permafrost, and I say almost permafrost because when the permafrost melts just a little bit, it causes the ground to become very distorted. So you have roads that have crazy bumps in them as some of the ground sags because it melts. If it stays frozen, everything is rigid. So roads really get tore up in Alaska as a result of the permafrost problem. Well, let's solve this problem for K, which is F over delta L. And the force, as the problem says, I'm going to climb in it and it sinks three centimeters. So Mg over delta L mg 95 times 9.8 931 over 0.03 is 31,000 newtons per meter so the period is 2 pi squared of m over k and that's 2 pi squared of 595 the total mass over the just discovered spring constant 31,000 is 0.87 seconds so a period of 0.87 seconds that's fairly realistic actually then the frequency is just 1 over period which is 1.15 hertz. Boing, 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 going down the road with shock absorbers that are shot. The shock absorbers should basically stop the oscillation. We'll get into that a little later.